Welcome to Scrutinize My System. This episode we will be looking at the alleged third version of the Macintosh system software. Because of the confusion in the numbering system, we will be relying on the version number of the system itself for this episode. Apple will not officially advertise their version until version 5, which will be covered in another episode. With that said, let's see what's in version 3. The industrial machine Steve Jobs established was now turning significant profits after three years. Macintosh now surpassed the Apple II in revenue despite the price, and despite the push by John Scully to focus on the Apple II. This should have been a time for celebration, but instead Apple as a company was making enemies thanks to John Scully himself. Bill Gates, who was at the time friends with Steve Jobs, tried to take pity on Scully. He sent him a letter recommending that he standardize the Macintosh system software by releasing it for other machines, much like Microsoft did with MS-DOS. Their response? Scully dismissed the letter. Instead, the company would decide to keep their operating system strictly for their own machines. Their thought was they were a hardware company and didn't see the value in standardizing the software. That same year, Microsoft would create a shell for DOS that they called Windows, which was a graphical user interface with a similar principle to Apple's Macintosh system software. Microsoft became a direct competitor, and Apple would attempt to sue them. Another competitor would emerge as Steve Jobs himself would leave key members of the development team from Apple to a new company he would call Next. They too would make their own graphical user interface, becoming another powerful competitor to Apple. Just like Microsoft, Apple would attempt to sue them as well. Steve Wozniak, the remaining co-founder, would also leave the company at the same time to venture other avenues. With him, the vision of Apple began to change as new executives from outside sources began to take the seats in the positions of power. A dark age for Apple was fast approaching. All right, so things are going to get a little crazy here because there really was no sense of direction in the numbering system from this point on. Um, we're going to start with System Software 3.0, and there's actually six incarnations of System Software 3. Each one kind of has its own separate purpose. Uh, 3.0 was what the Macintosh Plus came with. 3.1 is actually a guided tour of the uh, the Macintosh. Uh, 3.2 is an update of 3.0. 3.3 is to install Apple Share 1.0. And then there's a second version of 3.3, which installs Apple Share 1.1. And there's 3.4, which installs Apple Share 2.0 for the Macintosh 512K, which Things are going to get real confusing real fast, so just uh, just hold tight we'll, as we go through this. Probably not going to do all the operating systems just because of how um, how much of a mess it is. I'll show you 3.0. Alright, so this is System Software 3.0. Uh, about the Finder, it says uh, the Macintosh Finder, this is version 5.1. And you'll notice that there's a few things that have changed. I'll go with the ones that have changed first. The control panel has been re rearranged. Now everything's kind of labeled. You got the speaker volume. You've got uh, uh, rate of insertion, point blinking, double click, desktop pattern. They do give you a couple options with the desktop pattern now. Now you can click on this, and you can actually have a different desktop. Um, technically, the features are very similar on this thing. I think a couple of these Macintoshes actually came with a number pad now. Which is going to be the second uh, change that I'll show you. Keycaps now includes a number pad. But everything else, the scrapbooks kind of changed. The functionality has not changed, but what has changed is what's in here. So you've got the. Uh, you got the bar charts here, you got the flow charts, that's pretty similar. You got the memo. But then you got a bottle of champagne, and why did I click that too fast? So this is if you want to celebrate um, a promotion or 
you know, an increase in the stock value. And then you'll notice that the Macintosh icon has been replaced by a drawing of the Macintosh itself. I cannot, why am I double and triple clicking? This is not set on full speed. Okay, um, everything else is pretty much the same. You still got the alarm clock, which is not changed. You still got the calculator, which is not changed. Let me go ahead and close these because, but then you got this. Now, after Apple Talk has been released, they had Apple Share that just recently got released at this point. And you have the option to be able to install this using, well, another disk from Ver System Software 3.3 or 3.4, which has the Apple Share installations. But from there, you can pick your printer, you can pick a phone, you could technically connect it to a networked uh, printer. I don't have this installed. I'm just booting it off the floppy disk, so I don't really um, care for too much of that. One other thing I do want to show you is that with System Software 3, this is the first operating system that actually boots off of a hierarchical file system disk instead of a Macintosh file system. It's not the first one to support it, but it's the first one to boot off of it. And I will show you using the boot disk. Uh, we'll go ahead and name this test. Let's open this up. This is probably the easiest way to demonstrate this, so that's why I do the same thing over and over. So you'll see that I've got the same folder. Here, excuse me, I got a folder with the same name inside another folder that shares the same name, and it's let me do that because it's the, it is the hierarchical file system and not the Macintosh file system. Uh, Trash bulge is not implemented in 3.0 which you'll notice that there will be a little cosmetic thing that will change on this one um, later on I should say go ahead and empty trash now this version 2 also supports what they call mini finder uh, let's go ahead and install it first so I can actually demonstrate it let's go ahead and use the mini finder We gotta restart it first. And instead of having like a whole desktop and everything that's uh, showing all the different things on here, this is this is what's mini drive mini finder, excuse me. And again, I don't really have much to demonstrate it with, but basically what you do is you put a list of programs and everything on here, you just click on this and then click open. But since we don't have it, we're just gonna have to go straight to the desktop. Um, so let's go ahead and remove that. And that's really it for System Software 3.0. Um, let's boot up the other ones and see what, what they show. All right, so this one is the guided tour, which unfortunately I'm, I'm not really able to get this to work properly. I mean, we could try it. Yeah, no, it doesn't really do much. It, it attempts to load, but then it just kind of freezes and then goes right back to here. So this doesn't really work, unfortunately, in a virtual machine. And I don't really have any machines that I can plug into this to record without the screen flashing and everything. So unfortunately, I'm unable to demonstrate that. Uh... Okay, so this one is going to be System Software 3.2. And there's actually two disks that came with this one. Let's go ahead and put them both in. Um, so we got the system installation. And I'm not going to install this, but you've got um, a couple different things on here. you got the system finder, all that stuff. you got a utilities folder, which you can do the installer and the installer scripts. The second disk is a hard drive tester for the HD20. It doesn't test the Skeksis. I haven't been able to get it to run. Well, I haven't been able to get it run at all. But to my knowledge, this only tests the HD20 from Apple itself. So it's kind of useless unless you happen to have that specific hardware or that hard drive. Because you're not going to be able to go and just test any uh, any hard drive that you find on the market. 
Uh, about the Finder, this one says is version 5.3. That's the Finder version. This is System Software 3.2. Again, this was kind of a dark age for Apple. Things were starting to get out of hand, and nobody can really keep track of uh, what was going on. So we got this. Calculator's unchanged. I'm just going to go down the list. We got the Chooser, which right now is just saying there is nothing to choose on the startup disk, which kind of makes sense because I didn't install anything. Control panel is the same as it was in 3.0. Keycaps, the same as 3.0. And then the scrapbook has the same as 3.0. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, these are still hierarchical file system. I do want to try something now. No, nope, no bulge yet. It's coming up though. Let's go ahead and empty the trash. Okay, this is another 3.2. This one, not much has changed. I don't know why I boot this one up. Oh yeah, that's why. Because I wanted to show this one actually to have the chooser on it. So this one is for the, the Macintosh 512K, which you can tell really is almost exactly the same. There's almost not, almost hardly anything at all that's changed on here. Now one thing I did want to point out I was tempted to do it for this episode, but I I decided against it. This, these operating systems are technically, I, I'll say to an extent, are interchangeable with the different machines. So I could, in theory, take a Macintosh system software blunt one and install it on the latest um, Motorola Apple computer. I'll say the latest Motorola, the, uh, excuse me, the latest Macintosh computer that supports the Motorola processor to an extent. There are gonna be a lot of problems, but it is possible to do it. And I was really tempted to boot this up using a um, um, an app, a Macintosh 2 emulator, or excuse me, a, a virtual machine, because that one actually has color. I might do that at the end of this episode. Okay, this is the last operating system I have. This one is 3.3, .3, version 3.3. .3. The finder should be version 5.5. .5. But this one is, um, this one's another one of those installation discs and you'll, you'll start noticing that things will change up a little bit. In regards to access privileges so you'll start noticing uh, this one starts more focusing on networks uh, the choosers changed a little bit with this one I don't have anything installed unfortunately so I'm unable to demonstrate that control panel is still the same as 3.0 keycaps is still the same as 3.0 most of these little things are pretty much going to go unchanged so that's not going to be that uh, that special in the uh, the coming episodes uh, this changed a little bit. So now we've seen all the operating systems for, well, there's one more, but I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but really not much has changed between it. Now that we've actually gone through all the, uh, ep the, uh, operating systems, let's go ahead and boot this using a Macintosh 2 virtual machine. All right, so this is the the Macintosh 2. And you'll notice something immediately that sticks out like a sore thumb is that this little Apple logo in the corner is now color. But everything else is still black and white. And that's because the color the color support's not going to be available until system software 4. Uh excuse me, 4.1, I believe. It's going to be one of those, but there's no options for color on them, but it's just nice to have that little color icon in the corner here. So, because that kind of makes it, I don't know, just that little bit of an accent just kind of makes it less ominous and less bleh.
Even though the rest of it's black and white, but I don't know. That's just me. And it runs a little bit faster, too, but. But anyways, I just wanted to show that. Um, so that is it for System Software 3. I'm going to have more episodes on the way. I'm going to have System Software 4, which will demonstrate some of the color and all that the cool stuff. And I do apologize that uh, the next couple episodes will probably be on the dark side because um, Apple's not exactly in a good position right in this point of history, but... Uh, I like to tell how it is. Anyways, if you like these episodes, uh, please subscribe. I've got more videos on the way. I've got Microsoft videos on the way as well. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy.